Hey guys, I'm going to tie the Guardi Lou. Uh, I developed this fly for a friend of mine um, who was looking for a silver sides imitation. But what I realized after tying it is that this pretty much imitates any bait fish that swims. And one of the really cool things is the pronounced lateral line that goes through the fly itself. And what you'll see is that I do some pretty cool blending with some materials and I think it'll give you some interesting ideas on other ways to blend materials to really create any minnow, any style that you're looking for uh, that will work in your local waters. So let's get tying. I'm going to start with a Targus, and it's a Targus 9394 number six. That's going to be the back hook, and as far as thread, um, I'm going to start with a uni mono size 0 0.004. And I'm just going to lay down the foundation here. And the reason why I'm using the mono uh, become clear as I tie, but basically want the materials to shine through and not be blocked by the thread. This is a uh, lateral line. It's material from Plashaboo. And I'm just gonna tie it in. I'm basically going to start by tying in, uh, flash out the, the back, which you'll see. I'm just gonna do two different strands. on either side. And it should just be coming out uh, fairly straight out the back of the hook. And it's about half an inch in total, total length. Now I'm just going to take the lateral line and I'm going to tie it in basically wrap up the, the body itself. And I'm gonna wrap up. And I could use the rotary feature if I really wanted. You can see how that leaves a very distinctive color down the side. Okay, that's tied off. Now I'm just going to wrap back right on top of it. And the cool thing is, you can see it doesn't change any of the, the color whatsoever. And now I'm going to put a dubbing loop in. Wrap around the loop itself twice. And now just tie back up the hook. And I'm just gonna use my HMH, that handle to hold things in place. Do a quick knot up front. And hold my thread in, in place here. Now I'm gonna utilize um, a Stoneflow Roto dubbing tool. This thing is pretty amazing and cool. If you haven't seen it or played with one, I strongly recommend you do. It doesn't have to be a stone flow. It can be any roto dubbing tool. They're really amazing. The other piece that I'm gonna um, use here is the Loon D-Loop tweezers. These things are also equally cool and they're going to help me uh, basically create the material or uh, to capture the material that I want in the dubbing loop itself. So I have three different things. I'm gonna use um, what's called Starburst fibers. These are from Fly Tires Dungeon. They're very cool. I have three different colors that I'm gonna lay down. I'm gonna start with pearl. I'm just basically back, 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 pinching it, back, 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 back. laying it flat. Spades get out just by tapping it. Now I've got some pearl fire. The coloration is uh, a little different. It's got some highlights of, uh, of gold in it and red. It's really neat. And then of course the primary body color that I'm interested in is silver. So I'm gonna double, 
double that. Now I've got the material, it's um, laid out nice and flat. I'm just gonna take my um, tweezers and basically go over top, pinch. Now I've got the material in place. You can see it there, um, nice. Now I'm gonna trim off this back edge. Trim it right into my garbage can. And now I'm going to basically create a Christmas tree or a triangle type taper right down the, the back. And this is the back, so I don't want it to be super long, but I do want it um, basically to create a uh, taper. And what I'd like you to think about as you're creating this is basically you're creating a fake hackle. The, the cool thing is though, obviously you're creating it in whatever color combination that you want to imitate whatever bait fish you would like. I just pinch it in there. I'm careful recognizing that gravity is against me here. Um, if I push too far or if I don't keep tension on it, it will come out. And now I just take my roto tool and I spin it in place. And as you can see, it basically begins to create that fake hackle for us. So it's spun a bunch. The materials are pretty much held in place. And I just take my Velcro, which is on my trusty tongue depressor, and just pull those fibers out so you can see they're sticking straight out, which is exactly how we want them to be. Again, just like a hackle. All right, they're in there. They're nice and uh, tight, secure. They're wrapped in, and now I'm going to go up. I'm going to wrap up, but I'm gonna be careful because I wanna maintain that lateral line as I come up, which means I do not want these wraps to be tight. I don't want them to be side by side. I don't want them to be on top of each other. In fact, what I'm trying to do is to space them as far apart as possible so you can see that lateral line bleed right through because that's what we're trying to, to imitate is that, that lateral line. Now I've got it um, up top. Looks like I got about half an inch too much material. No big deal. Come in behind it and I do one wrap from the back, another wrap from the back, and I'm just gonna let that rotor dubber sit, pull the materials back, and I'm gonna go in front of it a couple times. Doesn't matter how many, just get some wraps in front basically to hold that material. Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna clip the excess off here, nice and tight. Get and clean my rotor dubber because I'm gonna need that for the front. And take my Velcro and just basically wrap the material back. Now, for the back part of this fly, there's two different um, colors that I want to lay down on here. <clears throat> One, I want to utilize uh, Senyo's laser dubbing. And I'm just going to use some Senyo laser dubbing in blue. And I'm just going to take a, a pinch. I don't need it to be too heavy. I'm just looking for an accent color. I'm going to preen it, basically grab all the, um, the tips do my best to make sure that they're aligned and now I'm going to lay it right across on the back of that hook and I just want the tips to come down to where the end of that lateral line ends. That looks good. And now I'm going to pinch with my opposite hand, do two loose, three loose wraps, doesn't matter. Pull the material up to make sure that it's all on top of the hook and then I'm going to go in front and just do a bunch of wraps again. <clears throat> now I'm gonna clip the excess off, twisting, just to make it nice and tight, and then trim it right off. All right, so that's the blue accent that I want on there. And now I'm going to utilize some craft fur. This just happens to be gray. I'm gonna cut out a little subsection of it, about a quarter inch by a quarter inch. Doesn't have to be exact. I'm just trying to keep the material all together. I don't clip it off. Laying it on top of the blue laser dubbing. Now I'm 
gonna do, again, two or three loose wraps. Pull the material up on top so I know it's all sitting on top of the hook. <clears throat> gonna double check to make sure I got the length I want, making sure that it's got a nice light veil over top of the blue, which it does. And now I'm going to wrap in front. I'm going to spin and clip the material off. Now, a nice trick, if you have too much material on the front and you want to get it off, you can always use your trusty lighter and just come in, being very careful, just hit the materials real quick. It'll snug them back and then you can easily go over top with your mono. And just to get everything locked into place and make that head look good, I'm just gonna take some Solaris. This happens to be thin, UV hard, run it over the top of the mono. I find this is easier to do this kind of a application than it is to trying to be surgical in nature with that Solaris. I'm just gonna wrap over top and whip finish. Oops. Not sure what happened there. Whip finish. Get it with my razor. And now hit it with the torch, basically to secure everything in, in place. Alright, so that's the, the back. And while it's still sitting in the vise, <clears throat> again, I'm just going to take my Velcro, rub through everything, make sure that everything is blended nicely, make sure my proportions look good. And I'm very happy with how that is, so I'm just going to pull that out of the vise for now. Now we're going to take the, the front hook, which happens to be a uh, Gamagatsu SP113L3H uh, size number four. And I'm going to use that basically to attach my lead eyes. So, got the hook in. And this time I am not gonna use the mono. If I use the mono, it would instantly pop. So I'm just using some Vivas 100 thread, which for those of you that have used it, know that it's pretty much indestructible. Lay down a, a base. Take my lead eyes. And the cool thing with lead eyes, if you haven't played with these, right, you want to get your spacing. So you want about the length of a hook eye in front as well. So that's how you position it. And you just do like four wraps on top. It's secure enough that you can now swing it underneath the hook itself and then straighten it out. And there's plenty of videos out there on how to secure lead eyes. So I'm not going to walk you guys through that. I'll share what I do though. <clears throat> so I do eight figure eights, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I go around underneath two times, pull tight, lash basically to the hook, and then I do eight again. Four, five, six, seven, eight, and lash underneath. So basically two loops, pull tight, and then secure. That's not going anywhere. It's nice and tight. Basically go down the hook. Now it's time to secure the other hook to the back. This is just some uh, Orvis 25 pound nylon that I had uh, sitting around. Just take like a four inch piece, put it through the rear hook. Beautiful lay the hook on its side and basically want to make sure that the mono as it comes off is in line as well. Now I don't put a bead in the back here 
Um, and I'm just gonna give it a couple loose wraps, get the distance that I want. I wanna make sure that there's enough of a distance that there's freedom for the back to move. And that also that you have the hook is further, for, farther, far enough back from the front hook that if fish grabs, it's not gonna miss the hook. So we're good there. That's lashed. Now I'm gonna come up. I'll try to secure this so I don't get hooked using a trusty hair clip. I'm gonna come up. I'm putting all sorts of pressure now on that mono, which by the way, you couldn't do with that. Um, or I'm sorry, with the Vivas, which you couldn't do with that mono. The mono would just explode. And tie this under, come back around, lash it under. Trim off the excess mono. And then my next step is I'm gonna hit this with Gorilla Glue. So let me just make sure, yep. That looks good. Everything's in line. All right. Got that. Now, super glued. Okay. I'm going to come back over everything. And if I was doing multiple flies, I would do, I would stop at this point because it's always good to let that super glue dry. For today, I'll just use the back of my pinky to wipe that off. No big deal. All right, everything is in place. This looks great. And what I'm gonna do now is exactly like I did in the, um, on the back hook. So I'm gonna take my lateral line and I'm going to put just a little bit out the back and I don't need to worry about the, the mono yet. I'm just gonna secure that in place. Trying to go right along the, the side there. And maybe leave a quarter inch, which I'm ultimately gonna tie back in. And do the exact same thing on the opposite side so now you guys can, can see. in place. Again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap the hook with this lateral line material and I'm going to trim it about a quarter of an inch back from where the next hook eye is, which will give me the illusion of a lateral line that basically continues through the entire fly. All right, so got the lateral line laid down. I'm going to come back up front whip finish the Vivas. All right, that's done. I'm gonna get back out the mono. Put my mono in right at the, the head. Okay, so now we got the monos back on there. Take another piece of lateral scale. And tie it in place. we go. Oh, I'm just wrapping right down the entire length of the, the hook. Go back. And now I'm going to walk that lateral line material right up. Again, the idea here is that I want it to bleed through. It's extremely bright and flashy. I'm up at the head. I can tie it off and you'll see how that mono is so cool, right? You, you don't even know that you've basically gone over it, which is great. Tag here, there we go. All right, now the exact same process for the back. Now I'm gonna create another dubbing loop. It's about three and a half, four inches in length, go around, put it right around the handle there to hold it in position, and do a quick whip finish at the head. All right, exact same process. So I'm gonna take my roto dubber, put it in the, the loop, just 
just let it hang there. Take the materials that I'm interested in. So I definitely want that pearl material. I absolutely love how that looks. So I'm laying, laying that down. I got my pearl fire because I like a little bit of that red to bleed through, a little bit of that orange, and then really like this uh, silver. So I'm gonna put that in there pretty darn, pretty darn heavy. One last little pinch down below. And this one, I want the fibers, right? This fake hackle to be a little bit longer um, than what we did on the, the back hook because I want more undulation and more movement. So same thing, I got my materials there, basically gonna clip off the back. Now it's straight along those D-loop tweezers there. And I'm gonna rotate and I'm going to create my triangle this time a little bit larger, right? A little bit wider because I want more material. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do over the garbage can. All right. There we go. Open up the mono. Oh, there goes my roto dubber. That's the only hazard of having a garbage can right underneath. You can see I've been tying a few of these flies. Put my roto dubber back underneath. Pull tight. Go with the tweezers. And now I'm gonna spread things out just a little bit. Get things into position the way I want them. See how nice that looks. And now I'm just gonna give it that spin. All right. Looking good. The colors are blending nice. Grab my Velcro brush, give it a quick Keys, right? Pulling those loose fibers out, getting everything to stick out at a 90 degree angle. Spin it again. Pull those materials out. Very good. And you'll see how sparse it is. I like the sparse nature with all the flies that I tie. I don't want materials packed in so tight that they don't breathe and don't move. Now we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna start wrapping from the, the back and come up, creating that fake, fake dub. And now creating that space between. Again, I want, I want that illusion of a, a lateral line. And now when I get to the head up here, go right behind those eyes and do a couple of wraps. All right, okay, now I take my mono. I'm gonna come in from the back and do two or three loose wraps. Three loose wraps, there we go. Pull all the materials back, go in front. Pinch and cut. All done with the roto dubber. Velcro, really pull that out. And I hope you guys can see, but it really pops and really shows that lateral line, which is absolutely amazing. All right, now on the front of this, I'm gonna actually use uh, three different colors because I want things to blend in. I'm gonna use a little bit of the Laser Dub Lavender. Just take a little pinch of that. I'm gonna put it right across the top. Tie it in. I'm going to take my Senyo dubbing. I'm going to use the blue. It's got right a little bit of a lavender, a little bit of a blue. I'm going to put a little more blue than there is lavender. Put that right up on top. Tie it in nice, nice there. And I'm not going to tie in the gray yet, but I got to think, and now I got to tie in my white belly. So for the white belly, I have a material that's called um, BGDAW. It's another fly tire dubbing 
uh, fly tire dungeon dubbing. This material and this dubbing is longer, so it's longer than your uh, laser dub. So I'm gonna pull it out. And what I want is I want the belly basically to go all the way back to where this hook basically connects to the second. So I'm going to um, even up the ends as best I can. And I'm gonna have to do some trimming, but that's okay. Whatever, the less trimming I have to do and the more taper I can create with the materials, the better. So there we go. They're lined up pretty good. Now I'm gonna go back, lay it down. Just do a few wraps to hold it in position. And now with all materials, I'm gonna pull them forward. Um, and I'm gonna use my left hand now to control the bobbin. So coming over, applying a little more pressure. I've got the white still on the bottom. I've got the lavender and the blue still on the top which is exactly how I want it. And now I'm gonna bring that white back over top and I'm gonna measure. I'm gonna measure, I wanna come a little bit shorter than what those original materials are. So I can see how long those materials are, right? They come out to just about here. So I want them to end here. I have this um, very cool tool that allows me to do some tapering and that's what I'm gonna do. The scissors, they allow tapering. They don't cut everything all at once. And it's kind of nice because it allows you to not cut everything all at once. All right. Pull things back over, both the top and the bottom because they are secured up front. I'm gonna rotate the fly. And now I'm gonna bring my material back or my um, mono back and now just tie everything in. So I got my, my lavender, which is blended in. I've got my blue. You notice the lavender has come on top. I just think that's a cool, cool effect. And I'm going to now come in front of everything and put my final pieces of flat time material down. Again, I'm gonna use my gray craft fur. Cut the exact same amount. So it's like a quarter inch and a quarter inch. Obviously, oh, that's not gonna work. I must have trimmed some hair out of there. I'll try that again. Orange. And on these, um, you know, these hair patches, sometimes it's not operator error too. They're just not the same always. But this looks great. Um, the fibers are exactly the way I would like them. I can trim them later. I just want to get the gray into position just like we did on the back. So I'm going to do some loose wraps first. Two wraps. Pull things up, make sure it's secure. Do another. Make sure it's secure and on top. Now I'm going to go in front of it. Do a couple. And now this time, because it's so close, I can't twist it, I'll just clip it as close as I can to the bottom. And I'm gonna use the same trick that I showed you a few minutes ago, using that lighter basically to get that hair back. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Pull my mono back, pull my fibers back, bring the lighter in. You can use a cauterizing tool too. If you're careful, you know, you can get things to cinch back very nice. Don't put your mono on too quick or you'll, you know, you'll burn it. But that's the gray, right? So take a peek. It's settled nice on top. It looks good. The color blending is exactly how we'd, we'd like it to be. And now the last uh, material to apply is laser dub in white. Take a pinch of the laser dub. Do my best to align the ends. It's okay to have a natural taper there. 
bring it back. The tips are gonna come back short of what that last punch was that you laid in there. Gonna come right in front. Make sure it's on top, right? Just grab a hold, pull it on top. Do a couple more. Make sure it's secure. Double check, because once you tie it in, it's locked and loaded. And we're just gonna fold it back onto itself. Wrap in the front. And the great thing, right, there's a lot of downfalls to using this uh, 0 .004 mono. But you can see how many wraps I can put on this without creating any bulk, which is awesome. Okay, same thing. I'm going to take the Solera's um, thin, hard formula and lay it right onto the, the mono. This time I'm going to do about two inches worth. You can see it's very, I'm not applying a lot of pressure. Just, and you can do this with any UV cure resin that you want. Again, all I'm trying to do, because I'm not very uh, stable, is to get this universally wrapped around the head to create you know, that universal resin look, which is really, I think, really cool. I'll do a whip, finish. Use my razor, cut it off so I don't mess up my scissors. Take the torch. And that's it. That's the Guardi Lou. So you can take your Velcro, basically pull it through. Um, you can, of course, take it out of the vise and do some trimming as you see as you see fit. Really with things or the, the profile that you want. But, uh, but that's pretty much it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Um, leave any comments or questions below and I'll do my best to uh, answer them. Thanks everybody. Have a great day.